Today on Hands On Photography, I have an amazing guest, my man, Kenny Moore. We're gonna dive into the world of videography and, and, and video editing and just let you know what's going on in his world and something that he's doing with an outstanding tool out there, the free version of DaVinci Resolve. Y'all don't wanna miss this. Y'all stay tuned. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Listeners of this program get an ad-free version if they're members of Club Twit. $7 a month gives you ad-free versions of all of our shows, plus membership in the Club Twit Discord, a great clubhouse for Twit listeners. And finally, the Twit Plus feed with shows like Stacy's Book Club, The Untitled Linux Show, The Giz Fizz, and more. Go to twit.tv slash club twit. And thanks for your support. Hey, what's happening, everybody? I'm Matt Pruitt. This is Hands On Photography here on Twit. Hope y'all doing well. I'm unbelievable as always on this fine show. I like to sit down and share different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer as well as a better post processor. And uh, every now and then, heck, we'll even help you out with some of your video capture stuff, too. Hmm. Imagine that. Huh. Speaking of video capture and video editing this week, I'm sitting down with a guest because, you know, I like sitting down with some professionals out here in this in this space that uh, can drop some knowledge on y'all and share some little quick tips and tricks to help y'all get better. And that's what we got today. I'm sitting down with my man, Mr. Kenny Moore from Godsend Mixed Media, doing a lot of amazing stuff in the world of videography as well as uh, video post processing. So. Without any further ado, let me shut my yap and just bring my man Kenny on. So how you doing, my man? Good to see you. I'm good. How about you? Unbelievable as always, brother. I appreciate you joining me. As we mentioned here in our green room, if you will, before the show started, <laughs> I, mm-hmm. I, I I told you YouTube does a good job with, with recommendations and recommended stuff to me that I enjoy to watch. And I stumbled yep. across your YouTube channel, I don't know, sometime last year or what have you. And mm-hmm. I was like, okay, first off, this cat's <laughs> it's his uh, accent. He's he's this is my people because I, I know he's a southerner. I said, yep, I'm gonna watch this. And as I started mm-hmm. watching your channel, I was like, man, he he is really daggum good at this stuff. He's doing a good job with um, presenting the topic at hand, and he's allowing it to be presented in where it's like bite size and not something that's going to mm-hmm. go all over people's heads. And it's all about getting into the world of video. So tell everybody a little bit about where you're from and, and you know, you're doing video production and video um, capture and so forth. Tell us how you got started and all of that. Uh, I actually graduated from IT Tech back in like 2008. Nice. And that's when I was actually introduced to more or less, I guess, like the baseline we did. Uh, we did a little bit of work in like Premiere Pro and After Effects, but it was just like the introduction level. Yep. And I actually, I, I, my initial mission was to get into video game design. Mm-hmm. Uh, but once I graduated, there was everybody was talking about bachelor's degrees and or the equivalent experience of that other bachelor's. And financially, it was it was tough enough to try to just get the associates. So I was like, well, I'm just <laughs> just kind of right. piggyback off what I learned and. I kind of got more into video editing, kind of fell in love with it. I bounced around for Premiere to, uh, I use uh, Cyberlink's Power Director for a little while. Yeah, I remember Cyberlink. And, yeah, I used it for a little while because it was, it was real, real base level, like a lot of drag and drop. And uh, I ended up like, right now I'm actually a truck driver. So I mean, I, I kind of got away from it. And then back in like 2019, right before like the, the bottom drop with the with the buyers <laughs> and everything. Yeah, I started kind of getting to YouTube, just doing like little gaming montages, as a little hobby, and um, that's when I actually found DaVinci Resolve. And before then, I'd never even heard of DaVinci. I didn't. Oh, really? Know about it? They didn't yeah, even bring it up at ITT. It. No, I literally never. Cause I, when I when I found it, I found that it had been used for color grade in Hollywood for years. Yeah, but I've never heard of it as far as the video editing side, and uh, I didn't want to pay the. The subscription for Premiere Pro just for a hobby. Yeah. So I was like, well, let me see if I have any other alternatives. I just typed in Premiere Pro alternatives. They bring up DaVinci and they bring up their magic word free next to it. Yep. Like, well, that'll <laughs> work. I mean, this is, for a hobby, yeah, I do that. Whatever. I think I had it for like, 
I had maybe it was like three or four months. A lot of what I knew from Premiere, I was able to easily transfer over. Yeah. As far as like the wording and uh, terminology and stuff. Yeah. And then I tried to do like a little video with my son. And I wanted to use the uh, the object removal tool, which is only in studio. And I was like, mm-hmm. well, can't have it. Can't. Gotta get studio. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I saw it was a one-time fee. My wife actually got it for me for my birthday. So I'm like, that'll oh, work. Nice. Nice. And so I was just using it. I, I really had no attention on trying to broaden into like a business at the time. I just bought it because I wanted, I guess my OCD kicked in. I just wanted all the features. <laughs> and uh, from there, I just kind of started more, learning more because I for a while, I avoided everything dealing with fusion because it was so confusing to me with the nose and everything. Dude, so yeah. I just I stay strictly pretty much to the edit page. If I could do it on the edit page, I pretty much just left it alone. Right, and uh, I actually started watching. You know, it's kind of, I want there many tutorials out there as far as like channels like that that were really get into it. Mm-hmm. The few of, uh, that I found, I was able to kind of piece some stuff together and just kind of make things work. You so and see people now, folks. He he mentioned Fusion. If you're not familiar, Fusion is inside of DaVinci Resolve, and it's its con- compositing tool. Uh, think mm-hmm. of it as a free-ish version of After Effects. Uh, with yeah. After Effects on the on the Adobe side, you're able to do compositing and green screening and doing some, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of different layers and, and special effects. It's a lot of a lot of cool tools in After Effects as well as inside of Fusion, but. As someone that spent a long time in After Effects, going to mm. Fusion was a mess for me, man. Yeah. Is that the, the node structure, I, I'm i totally fine yeah, with the I... node structure on the color tab. But dude, yeah. in After Effects versus going into nodes in Fusion, it, it, it's a, a whole different way of thinking. And I'm still not quite there, but I'm getting there. And you, mm. on your channel, you do a lot of stuff on Fusion. Um, and again, yeah, Fusion is available to for free too, right? Yeah, it's part of the free version of, of DaVinci. And like once I got into it, I like fell in love with it. That's why I started making like presets and 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 little bundle packages and pretty much anything I can do in Fusion, I, I go straight to it. That's what's and up. I try to I practice them when I do my presets. I practice them up where people can use them on the edit page. Uh, if you go to my website, everything I what is a free asset or a paid asset, I always leave it open ended where you can go into Fusion. And you can see the node structure and kind of like reverse engineer it. It's pretty much what I did with a lot of stuff that I found. Right. Uh, stuff like uh, like the templates and stuff that you find on like, on Vato Elements or Motion Array. Yep. I would I went on those websites. I subscribe. I download a you know asset or something like that, and I would try to look at the node structure or any little any little tidbit of information I can get to try to see how they got to where they, the end result. Mm-hmm. I would just basically try to reverse engineer it. Man. And, and, and that's the smart way to go there um, because mm-hmm. it's only going to help you in the long run when it comes time to building your own stuff from the ground up. You know, yeah. in, in this world of we can subscribe to to the Artless and the Vato and what have you and just literally just drag our effects into our video that we shot and be done with mm-hmm. it in five minutes. I get that. That's a that's a total convenience. Heck, I'm a subscriber to some of those services. I subscribe to Invato mm-hmm. and some other stock services because every now and then I need something that's really quick and easy. But also yeah. at the same time on on this show, hands on photography, I do recommend people trying to build some things from scratch if you can, you, you know, yeah. regardless of what it is. Uh, you know, we've talked about doing simple animations and stuff inside of Premiere and inside mm-hmm. of Resolve and just understanding that just how the motion works in it and trying to keep things from being so linear. So, yeah, being able yeah. to reverse engineer, that's that's super smart on your part. And I'm, I'm sure it's I could tell this definitely helped because your channel is just yeah. is really, really great. You know, when I started watching your channel, it was small. You know, mm-hmm. you two recommended it to me, but in, in small channel, that means nothing. If it's good content, it's good content. And yeah. again, it's been about a year for me since I've been watching. Dude, mm-hmm. your growth. Your growth has just been crazy, crazy. What, mm-hmm. what, what, how, how, what are, did you have a mission for growing your channel like this? Or is it just sort of, um, wow, this is like, just happening. So I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> well, I had a YouTube channel once before back in like 2011, but it was, it had nothing to do with like video editing. So it was actually, uh, I had a smartphone. I had the Windows uh, HTC HD2 and the phone. Yeah. The phone kind of sucked. I figured out how to put like Android and different things on there. Oh, and 
and the channel uh yeah it was like i only had like 600 subscribers but back then it was a little easier to get into the, the partnership program right and google cut me a check for like 130 dollars i'm like oh i like this. yeah I, I got it i didn't know it was actually like a job i thought people were just doing it because they love doing creating video right so that's when i found out about the partner program and when i got rid of the phone i was like well i want to try to make this a real thing i want to try to make this you know some kind of like a business or whatever but i could never think of anything i kept trying to think of original concepts like no one else thought of and it was right today's age pretty much everyone thought of everything you just gotta put your own mix on it or true. twist on it true so when i got back into the youtube i was like well i'm gonna just kind of make tutorials on on what i know and just basically try to stay consistent try to cut down a lot of fluff like mm. some of the tours i do you probably can find another tutorial with it with like a bigger channel right but it's like all stretched out they promoting this that and other yep. so i try to do like a quick intro go straight into the information yeah get straight to the point and, you know, get on out. Try not to hold anybody up too long. So yeah. that was pretty much my main mission was to get straight to the info and stay consistent. So I try to do at least one one or two a week. Uh, like I said, I still work a full-time job. So it's kind of mm. kind of hard to juggle that along with, you know, family and everything. But I try to do my best I can. Right, right. Now, with that said, because you, you, you're you basically saying, all right, I know the kind of content I want to create for my channel. You mm-hmm. have been, I know you've been able to get it, get a little client list built up and who, who's your typical client for that's going to come to you to, to have you work on their video. Uh, I got a partner of mine that is actually from Memphis. He does a lot of, uh, uh sports highlights. He like record, uh, sports games and video, uh, right. for like football game stuff. Yeah. He sent me a couple of things. Uh, I had a guy out of uh, Salt Lake city, Utah. He's an up and coming, uh, uh, rapper. And he, uh, he was actually started off with video art before he started rapping. And he yeah. had a video that he sent to me. I did one for him. So was, nothing's really just consistent right now, but I had a few people reach out to me, like on Instagram. They'll send me a couple of clips, do like a cool little promo, and I just send it back yep. to them. Well, let me go ahead and tell you right now, it's coming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it's, it's coming. You're making a name for yourself. and it, Yeah, I think those other ones, I guess my subconscious, was my real goal was to try to basically try to get into the creative space because when I was younger, I wanted to be like an architect. Mm-hmm. Then I switched, like I said, to game design. But yeah, even in high school, I had uh, we, we did Flash on uh, on the Mac computers and we wow. to use the Flash pad. I made like a little claymation <laughs> video and everything. Oh, so I always man. wanted to get into the creative space, but like a lot of millennials, once I got out of school, I didn't <laughs> end up doing nothing with my degree. I ended up working retail for like 10 years and then, like I said, right now I'm a truck driver. So right, right. I'm trying to get out of the truck driving and get into my <laughs> actual field. <laughs> Well, see, now the next thing you need to do is go ahead and shoot some some footage of your 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 trucking log. You know, you, you're you're mm-hmm. going down and, and handling these loads and whatnot and just put your creative creative spin on it with all of your effects and stuff like that just to make it pop. That could be I, something you could do. Yeah, I thought about that. But the um, only thing is I do a dedicated route. So I'm always I go to the same locations every yeah. night. Yeah, so I got like a little sit right. I drive overnight. It's like six hours. I come on back home. So yeah, that's why I never really did anything with because I'm not seeing a lot of like, you know, like a new sites and stuff like that. If I was like an over the road driver. And yeah, like yeah. I, I drive a, a box truck. So I'm not even in the semi truck. I'm in the box in the truck. Box. I drop off some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I drop off a John Deere and then I come on back. That's <laughs> still all right. Still sound like a nice mm-hmm. gig to me. Now, as far as your, your video effects and the people that you, you had the, the opportunity to work with here in the past, when you go to put your creative spin on it, is it more of a, a meeting with them that they say, well, all right, here's my footage. I want it to look like this, this and that from a color grading standpoint, because I know you know color grading. Um, mm-hmm. But then when the effects come in, they they give you any input on that? They let you know they want to see at least four glitches or, or you know, anything? The, uh, for, the, for the most part, I'm, the stuff I've done so far, they pretty much just give me the footage and say, hey, do work you? your magic. Yep, just do uh, you. I, okay. usually, uh, yeah, I always <laughs> ask them, hey, is it a video that you want to kind of mimic or is there any type of effects that you want to mimic? And every now and then I get like, oh, yeah, well, here's this. It's a like a little Uzi Vert video or something like that, just to kind of give me like a a blueprint to kind of go off of. Yeah. Uh, but like I said, for the most part, it just hey, do your magic. I try not to go overboard with uh too many effects. I that's most of my channel is about. So a lot of times, in my mind, I would think, okay, they want a crap ton of effects. That's what I know how to do. But uh-huh. I usually try to kind of taper it to whatever song I'm doing. I try to go with the the flow of the song and as far as like the lyrics and stuff like that. Depending on what they're saying in the song, I might try to do an effect that center around the lyric or just trying to 
sitting around like a bass drop or something like that. Nice. I love you that. Kind of feel it out. I love that because some people do overdo it. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there's an effect, a, a light leak effect. Very, very yeah. simple, right? I swear there's some videos when I'm scrolling through on TikTok. Is mm-hmm. I think I'm gonna get a seizure, man, because everybody's doing a it's light. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, come on, you're overdoing it. Just do it once or twice and move on. Mm-hmm. Good grief! Now I used to try to leave stuff like that for like a scene change because you might have one or two scenes that kind of go back and forward. Then you might have a dressy scene where there was in front of a building and or in a car lot. Then it like on top of a mountain or something like that. Right. I do like a effect for when they switch over to their mountain view because it's so drastic. Drastically changed. Yeah. Stuff. That yeah, makes sense. Go fix it. Yeah. <laughs> now I just kind of like do a simple clip between the first two clips and get to the last one, do the effect or transition from there. It drives me crazy when I see it. Mm-hmm. Good. Grief. That's a little bit what I learned from when I was at ITD Tech, kind of like the some of the bases, I guess you can say, or fundamentals of like a video editing, trying not to overdo stuff, trying right. to fill out when you need a transition versus just trying to force one in there. Right. Because sometimes just project, a cut is okay. <laughs> yeah, I think my first project I had uh I had, but I had did a project using a uh, Cyberlink Power Director, and they had the little transition tab, and then you just kind of get a preview of. Them. Yeah, I just threw like a hundred <laughs> transitions. I'm like, oh, this look cool. This look cool. And she was like, calm down, just take like ninety percent of that out and just do simple cuts. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> and they had the little airplane transition, and all that little crazy stuff. So I just threw everything in. I'm like, this look cool. I like it. She was like, no, that's not it. She's like, I'm gonna stop you right here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Now, from an inspirational standpoint, is there someone in particular, whether it be a videographer or an editor, is there anyone out there that that inspires you as far as how you go about your workflow and, and, and you're a bit of a, a hmm, let me put my godsend media touch on it? Is anybody out there? Not really as a right now. Uh, I guess I can probably, I know a lot of time I look at uh, it's a Premiere Pro channel, but uh, I think it's Brian. Uh, Del, Del Bob, I can't remember his, how to pronounce his last I name. I know who you're talking about. Yep. Yeah, he got like a hundred thousand subscribers on on YouTube. He has his own like you know his store with the uh he does the he made the as far as I know he made the paper transition really popular. Yeah. And uh so I use a lot I watch a lot of his videos and uh I actually just translate a lot of his stuff from Premiere to DaVinci because uh once you train once you begin to kind of switch over those two the terminology kind of changes. I know like on for a prime example. In Premiere, they have the, uh, the, I think it's the pin, is the puppet tool. Yep. You can use it to kind of uh, yep. move, you know. To move around things around. around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I had Google, a little bit after I first got DaVinci, I got Google, I got, was it a puppet tool in DaVinci? And the only thing it brought up was the grid tool. So it was like, it was literally almost the same thing, but they had different things for them. So that's one of, uh, it's actually one of my tips I tell a lot of people, because a lot of people I talk to, they use it come from Premiere. Yep. I'm like, hey, stuff that you're used to in Premiere, the terminology, look those up, Google them, and sometimes you will find the equivalent to it in DaVinci. The only thing you had to do from that point is figure out how to use it as a because use it as a node. Yep. Just figure out how to attach the nodes and make it flow right. Yeah, that's been my challenge with um on the DaVinci side is is figuring out merge nodes and things like that. Cause sometimes you don't need a merge node, sometimes you do, and um background nodes and all of that stuff it, it's but again that's part of the process of learning this thing mm-hmm. and that that youtuber is brian uh brian del mata brian de mata yeah that's him yeah he's uh yeah i've i've, I've watched his channel several times so he's he's mm-hmm. quite talented quite talented yeah now before we get out of here i want to allow you to tell folks where we can find some of the things that you're doing and working on and if there's a website you'd like to promote Here's your time to give you the, the good old uh, shameless plug, my man. Uh, well, I have my website is gsmixmedia.com. I have a I got a quite a few like little free plugins and presets that I uh, post there, and uh, that's pretty much it on that on that. End. Like I said, a few little presets uh, that I got set up there. I'm trying. I'm working on other stuff, but like I said, I got to juggle my schedule. Yeah. I got a lot of stuff planned. Just hadn't got to all of it. <laughs> uh, for the most part, you'll find everything. Pretty much on my YouTube. I'm on Instagram. It's a GS Mix underscore KQM. I post there every now and then little quick little anime edits and stuff like that when I have the time. Nice. Nice. Well, yeah, for the most part, I'm on, I'm on YouTube for the most part. Outstanding. Well, I'll definitely have links to your to your website as well as um, so people can check out your presets as well as yeah. your YouTube channel. Because, again, I, I'm 
I'm a very, very happy subscriber and I enjoy seeing your little notification pop up every week because I think you do at least one a week or so. Yeah, um, I, you, I, did, I did two. I actually got a little one uh, this morning. I got two this week and I actually got my second sponsor. I just landed. I'm going to be doing a video for uh, actually when I go pick my son up. Uh, when I get back, I'm going to work on that. Try to have it up by like next Monday. Look, look at that, man. That's what's mm. up. That's what's up. Sponsors showing up and everything. Good stuff, man. Yep. It's my, yeah, my first one was a uh, visual VFX. I did it, I think, it was about two weeks ago. They reached out to me uh, via email and was like, hey, check this out. I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I, I like it. So, yeah, we're going to work. That's awesome. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, Kenny, my man, thank you again for your time. I, I'm wishing you nothing but continued success. And um, I'm actually looking forward to following the success because you, you're on your way, my man. I'm, 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 I'm rooting for you, brother. I appreciate it. <laughs> That's going to do it for this week's episode. Ah, look here. My man just sits down and he's juggling his schedule. He had his he has his passion to be creative, juggling his work life schedule and said, you know what? I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to create some content. And now it's starting to open even more doors for him. I love his channel. And I love what he's doing. And I really, really hope y'all got some fire out of this here. So you're going to go out there and continue to create some great content for yourself and uh, create some content for some other folks and potentially grow your creative passion, just like he did. That's going to do it for us this week. Be sure to send me any comments, feedback, emails, what have you. Just send them on over to hop at twit.tv. Again, that's hop at twit.tv. Love hearing from you all. If you got questions about Mr. Kenny, send them to me and I can send them to him, so on and so forth. Uh, if you got image critiques from your photos or, or videos that you've been working on, send them over. I'm more than happy to take a look at it. And if you don't mind it being a subject of a future episode, please say so in the email because I don't want to show your content without your written consent. So that's, that's just how I roll. Sorry. But hey, make sure you're subscribed to the show as well and keep sharing the show out with everybody. All of our subscription options are on the website, twit.tv slash hop. That's twit.tv slash H-O-P. For hands-on photography, where you'll see we're on Spotify, we're on Apple Podcasts, and YouTube channel as well. All right, everybody. Thank you again for the support. I shall see you all next time. So safely create and dominate. Y'all take care. Hey, I'm Rod Pyle, Editor-in-Chief of Ad Astra Magazine, and each week I join with my co-host to bring you This Week in Space, the latest and greatest news from the final frontier. We talk to NASA chiefs, space scientists, engineers, educators, and artists, and sometimes we just shoot the breeze over what's hot and what's not in space, books, and TV. And we do it all for you, our fellow true believers. So whether you're an armchair adventurer or waiting for your turn to grab a slot in Elon's Mars rocket, join us on This Week in Space and be part of the greatest adventure of all time. <laughs>